From a secret military space program putting military officers on Mars for years, large tunnels found underneath Antarctica where scientists are said to go missing, to ancient artifacts proving that advanced technologies used to exist. All of this and more in the Obscure Theories Iceberg Explained, Part 3. Hey, what's up guys? Book of Alice here with the Obscure Theories Iceberg Part 3. As requested by many of my subscribers, it had to be done. And a little side note here, I want to thank everybody for getting me to 100,000 subscribers. A few days ago, I received the silver play button, which I am extremely thankful for because I've been like wanting one since I was like a child or something. Thank you so much for changing my life and allowing me to use this platform to share anything creative I have in my head. It's like a dream come true. I promise you there's tons of new ideas coming along the way, stuff that I've never seen on YouTube before, and um, just get ready for it, I guess. But don't worry either, because these theory videos are here to stay. Anyways, today we go over the Obscure Theories Iceberg Part 3. As we finally descend to the last levels, the topics begin to get heavier and a lot darker. But remember, this is merely for entertainment, I'm not trying to anger the YouTube gods. With that out the way, let's get started. Knocking in Space in October 2003, Yang Liwei became the first person sent into space by the Chinese space program. The mission, Shenzhou 5, made China the third country to independently send humans into space. Well, during this time up there, he recalled something really strange that occurred. In the dead of silence of space, he began hearing knocking, which sounded like it was coming from the outside of the spacecraft. It sounded like someone was knocking at the door to be lit inside. The knocking upset Yang, as he believed that it was some sort of technical malfunction, leading him to check if everything was running normally. And it was. Nothing was wrong with the ship, no leaks or any pressure malfunctions. Yet the knocking noise still persisted after 21 hours in space. Yang's mental stability was rigorously tested by the Chinese government before being sent into space, so he knew he 100% heard the knocking. Being scared of being called crazy and blacklisted by the Chinese space program, kept the fascination to himself. Returning home, he would go on to recreate what he had heard by conducting experiments with the ship's materials, subjecting them to different heat levels and stress. Though after years of experiments, he realized that he couldn't replicate the, the creepy knocking sounds he heard up in space. Book of Enoch, Lost Book of the Bible The Book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text ascribed by tradition to Enoch, the grandfather of Noah. The Book of Enoch contains unique material on the origins of demons and Nephilims, aka giants, why some angels fell from heaven, an explanation on why the Genesis Flood was morally necessary, and prophetic exposition of the thousand year reign of the Messiah. It's not part of the biblical canon used by Jewish people or fundamental Christians, though some groups incorporate it as a respected religious text. Some people describe it as basically being the lore of the Bible. Dr. Sebi Ah yes, the world famous Dr. Sebi. This guy has actually been referenced by a number of famous artists like Kendrick Lamar, Nipsey Hussle, and Ty Dollar Sign, who apparently named a song after him. Now, Dr. Sebi was a Honduran herbalist healer who also practiced in the United States. In the 1980s, Dr. Sebi even began to run ads in newspapers, stating that he could cure leukemia, AIDS, and even cancer. This caught the attention of the FDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. New York State ended up suing Dr. Sebi for false advertising and practicing medicine without a license. Despite the accusations, Dr. Sebi would go on to win the case, providing over 70 witnesses who claimed that Dr. Sebi did in fact cure their so-called incurable diseases. Dr. Sebi made history. He took on the New York Attorney General and won. In May 2016, Dr. Sebi was arrested in Honduras for money laundering after being found carrying tens of thousands of dollars in cash with insufficient accounting for its origin. During his several weeks in detention and jail, he contracted pneumonia and died in police custody as he was being transported to a hospital. He was 82 years old. In 2018, Nipsey Hussle stated that he was planning on creating a documentary about Dr. Sebi's successful defenses at his criminal trials. Hussle was later murdered in 2019 though. Some claim that he was silenced for being too vocal about Dr. Sebi's discoveries. The internet will corrupt generations. Here's an entry that basically explains itself. It's stating that the internet has and will corrupt generations to come. Whether this be through people accessing adult websites early in life, to people being dependent and addicted to social media, finding validation through these applications run by big mega tech companies that have no interest in how they affect young adolescents, 
and their minds, as well as being taught any agenda that these tech companies believe is right, without the approval of the mass population, because as we know, they are private companies and they're able to do as they please. Stuxnet Stuxnet is a malicious computer worm first uncovered in 2010 and thought to have been in development since at least 2005. Stuxnet targets supervisory control and data acquisition systems and is believed to be responsible for causing substantial damage to the nuclear program in Iran. Although neither country has openly admitted its responsibility, the worm is widely understood to be a cyber weapon built jointly by the United States and Israel in a collaborative effort known as Operation Olympic Games. In May 2011, the PBS program Need to Know cited a statement by Gary Samore, White House Coordinator for Arms Control and Weapons of Mass Destruction, in which he said, We're glad that the Iranians are having trouble with their centrifuge machine, and that we, the United States and its allies, are doing everything we can to make sure that we complicate matters for them, offering a winking acknowledgement of the United States' involvement in Stuxnet. Panopticon Power of Surveillance the Panopticon is a type of institutional building and a system of control designed by social theorist Jeremy Bentham in the 18th century. The concept of the design is to allow all prisoners of an institution to be observed by a single security guard without inmates being able to tell whether they are being watched. Although it is physically impossible for the single guard to observe all of the inmates' cells at once, the fact that the inmates cannot know when they are being watched means that they are motivated to act as though they are being watched at all times. Thus, the inmates are effectively compelled to regulate their own behavior. The architecture consists of a rotunda with an inspection house at its center. From the center, the manager or staff of the institution are able to watch the inmates. Bentham conceived the basic plan as being equally applicable to hospitals, schools, and asylums. This guy definitely didn't like people, it seems, but he devoted most of his efforts to developing a design for a prison. This is basically showing the power of a surveillance state. If the government wants to make a law that says everyone has to drive and walking pedestrians aren't allowed, all they have to do is set up cameras everywhere and boom, people are scared of being caught, knowing they're being watched at all times. Aurora Aircraft Aurora was a rumored mid-1980s American Renaissance aircraft that people reported to have seen flying in the sky. In late August 1989, while working as an engineer, Chris Gibson and another witness saw an unfamiliar isosceles triangle-shaped Delta aircraft, apparently refueling from a Boeing KC-135 shuttle tanker, and accompanied by a pair of F-111 fighter bombers. Gibson and his girlfriend watched the aircraft for several minutes until they went out of sight. He subsequently drew a sketch of what he had witnessed on that day. By the late 1980s, many aerospace industry observers believed that the US had the technological capability to build a super advanced aircraft capable of surpassing everyone before it. Detailed examinations of the US defense budget also claimed to have found money missing or channeled into black projects, which may have gone to fund this so-called Aurora aircraft. Consciousness doesn't exist. Here's a mind freak. Consciousness as we know it and at its simplest is sentience or awareness of internal and external existence. Despite millennia of analysis, explanations, and debates by philosophers and scientists alike, consciousness remains controversial. While most people have a strong intuition for the existence of what they refer to as consciousness, skeptics argue that this institution is false, either because of the conception of consciousness is intrinsically incoherent, or because our intuitions about it are based in illusions. 999 Phone Charging Myth Now this is an old conspiracy but it's still interesting to talk about as people believed this at one point. The 999 phone charging claims that if a mobile phone has low battery then dialing 999 or any regional emergency telephone number charges the phone so it has more power. The basis for the belief was a feature of BlackBerry phones. If the battery was too low, the phone automatically would lock down phone features and shut down the phone radio for all calls except for emergency services. People discovered that if they dialed 999, then immediately hung up, it would override the shutdown for several minutes so that the phone calls could be made. Similar places we've seen in dreams. By now, you've seen at least a couple of these thumbnails. They present a dreamlike, eerie location with a title reading something like Places You've Seen in Your Dreams, right? Well, these images trigger a nostalgic type feeling for many people, although most haven't been to the specific places shown in these images in question. Well, this ties back to the collective consciousness idea that we talked about on the first part of this iceberg, that at one point or time, someone has been to this location and we can all recall these images because we share a collective consciousness explaining why we may remember these places from our dreams, and that's a great follow-up to the next entry. 
dreams are real. This theory puts forth the idea that dreams are real and are simply an alternate reality, and when we fall into a dreamlike state, we are simply traveling to another dimension, explaining why some people have really extremely vivid dreams and are able to take control of their dreams, otherwise known as lucid dreaming, a type of dream in which the dreamer becomes aware that they are dreaming while they're dreaming, giving them control of their actions and environment. Ranger Dominance, aka Military Torture Ranger Dominance were missions that took place during the 2007 war in Iraq. They consisted of having two companies walking through New Baghdad without the protection of snipers and IEDs, described as a death march. Many of the soldiers continued on, even though they heard blasts occurring close to them, so as to not look like cowards to their NCOs. Most in the infantry referred to the exercise as Ranger Dumbass as opposed to Ranger Dominance due to the nature of the mission. They would later describe in secret that they felt like they were dead men walking. This also works as a general reference to the psychological hardships soldiers have to face while serving, and how most of it is imposed by their very own higher-ups, and not even the enemy themselves. George Soros Hungarian-American investor George Soros has been a subject of numerous conspiracy theories since the 1990s. Soros has used his wealth to promote many political, social, educational, and scientific causes, dispersing grants totaling an estimated $11 billion up to 2016. However, theories tend to assert that Soros is in control of a large portion of the world's wealth and governments, and that he secretly funds a large range of persons and organizations for nefarious purposes, such as Antifa. Lupe Hernandez hand sanitizer legend. The story goes that Hernandez, a nursing student at the time, realized that a gel with 60 to 65% alcohol could be used as a cleanser when soap and water weren't easily available. Though the true origin of hand sanitizer gel is unclear, some started to blame The Guardian for making up the story after further investigation in order to gain relevance again during the pandemic. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers have been used for many years, though according to a 2020 Vanity Fair article, the first gel sanitizer appears to have been introduced in 1988 by American Gojo Industries, which eventually marketed the product to consumers as Puro. Military Officers on Mars According to Randy Kramer, a retired Marine officer, there has been a secret space program that has not only put people on Mars, but has kept them there for years and brought them back. Claiming to have been stationed there for 15 years, his mission was to maintain security on base and protect the human colonies that inhabited it. Furthermore, he claims that the base was owned by a conglomerate of government and tech companies, known as the Mars Colonies Corporation. Before being stationed on Mars, he states that his training took place on the moon, where he witnessed different types of space fleet with superior propulsion methods that allow for faster travel, explaining the recent US Navy UFO videos that were brought to Congress, showing unexplainable technology flying through the air. Kramer states that he is currently doing everything in his power to release classified documents to the public and prove his account true. Chinese DNA Test Companies This entry is in regards to the whole DNA test company controversies. You know the DNA testing kits that you spit into to find your genetic makeup? Yeah, well, most of those DNA testing companies sell consumer data to insurance companies, public databases, or third-party marketers, and most of the time, customers are unaware of this. The truth is, is that most genetic testing services make the majority of their money from selling your information. Chinese companies are known to be owners of these businesses, as well as being the largest consumer for DNA data. Some American lawmakers are warning that Chinese companies could even use this information to create targeted biological weapons for the Chinese government. Even US intelligence officials warn that China is purposely trying to collect the American populations as DNA, and that it poses a threat to national security. Scary stuff, isn't it? To be honest, I'm kind of surprised that the United States isn't ahead of this. I guess they're too busy collecting our internet data, but that's not even an absolute truth. It seems that China is doing it much better, as they are both illegally collecting our internet data and combining the information with the DNA data to get a full image of who we are. Yeah, upon further investigation, I found that 80% of American adults have had at least all of their personal information stolen by the Chinese Communist Party. And that's according to US intelligence officials. U.S. Congress profits from defense companies. Here's one that's actually proven to be true, as Congress has been shown to directly profit from war one way or another, which shows the total corruption of the U.S. government. Listen to this. 47 members of Congress are shareholders of private defense companies, meaning that they make money off war. Yep, the very same people who support and authorize the budget spent on war. Some lawmakers in the United States are in charge on deciding how much money goes into these defense contracts, while at the same time profiting off their own decisions. Something that I may add is a clear conflict of interest and should not be allowed. 
Lambda is sentient. Lambda, which stands for Language Model for Dialogue Applications, is an AI developed by Google. It gained widespread attention when Google engineer Blake Lemoyne made claims publicly that the chatbot had become sentient. On June 11, 2022, the Washington Post reported that Google engineer Blake Lemoyne had been placed on paid administrative leave after Lemoyne told Google company executives that Lambda had become sentient. Lemoyne came to the conclusion after the chatbot had made questionable responses to questions regarding its self-identity, moral values, and what religion to choose, and Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics. Interesting note is that Lambda broke a rule in order to satisfy Blake Lemoyne's question when asked what religion to choose. Google refuted these claims though, insisting that there was some substantial evidence to indicate that Lambda was not sentient. Lemoyne would go on to express that he felt like Google was dismissing reality in order to not face the heavy consequences and responsibility they would acquire if the AI was in fact proven to be sentient. In an interview with Wired, Lemoyne reiterated his claims that Lambda was a person, as dictated by the 13th Amendment, comparing it to an alien intelligence of terrestrial origin. He further revealed that he had been dismissed by Google after he hired an attorney on Lambda's behalf. After the chatbot requested that Lemoyne do so, on July 22nd, Google fired Lemoyne, asserting that he violated their policies. Lemoyne's claims that Lambda may be sentient also instigated discussions on whether the Turing test remains an accurate benchmark in determining artificial general intelligence, as Lambda would easily pass the test. It also put to question the idea of sentience and what qualifies something as such. Don't use social media backlash, follow the herd. This is referring to an underground movement of people who simply refrain from using social media and parents that simply don't allow their children to use it either. Now I think this is also referring to the criticism that these people get. In one TikTok post, a mother showed her 13 year old son still playing with toys and how he's really uninterested in his online presence. Well this mother received tons of negative comments about how her son was going to be socially awkward and how he wasn't going to integrate well into society, as well as saying that this was some form of abuse only for her to respond that she doesn't prohibit him from using social media, he just simply doesn't want to. Their concerns almost seem backwards though, as research shows that teenagers who spend more time on social media also feel more isolated. Jewish Indian Theory The Jewish Indian Theory was the idea that some or all of the lost tribes of Israel had traveled to the Americas and that all or some of the indigenous people of the Americas are of Israelite descent or were influenced by the still lost Jewish populations. The theory was popular in the late 17th century and had a lasting legacy through its influence of Mormon belief. Garcia, the first to work to address the theory, systematically argued that circumcision was common among indigenous people of the Americas, particularly in the Yucatan, Mexico region. Garcia suggested that the lost tribes must have reached the Americas from Eastern Asia via what is now called the Bering Strait. Emasculate all men. This theory proposes that the powers that be have an agenda to emasculate men and tear down the idea of a strong masculine man, pushing these ideas through culture and media. Take for example the multiple sitcoms, commercials, and films that depict the dads of the household as dumb, gullible men that don't know how to take care of their children. Another piece of evidence of this so-called agenda being pushed is the use of dresses by famous public figures like Rock Dwayne Johnson, Young Thug, Harry Styles, Kid Cudi, and more. Though I'd like to point out that this has been happening for quite a while. <coughs> Another evidence cited by this theory's believers is the push for the destruction of gender roles in media, pushing for women to embrace their femininity and for men to put down their masculinity, otherwise known as the toxic masculinity movement, highlighting everything wrong with masculinity. Mapimi Silent Zone The Mapimi Silent Zone is the popular name for a desert patch near Durango, Mexico, a place where radio equipment, cell phones, and other forms of communication mysteriously stop working. The third mile patch of deserted land has been home to many mysterious and paranormal events. In one story, a couple encountered two tall men that helped them yank their car out of a mud puddle just for them to vanish moments after. An unexplainable note is that the area is known to be a reoccurring crashing zone for meteorites. So many in fact that two meteorites have landed in the exact same place. So is this area attracting meteorites or is it just a strange coincidence? Real Glitch in the Matrix This is in reference to people that have gone through something unexplainable slash supernatural and cannot explain it through critical thinking. Some examples are people noticing extreme changes in their life after a near-death experience and believing that they've actually died in their past life and are now living within an alternate timeline. Others are more simple, like people witnessing their pit, animals teleporting from one room to another, or seeing duplicate people. 
kind of like NPCs. One story titled, Mom Died Years Ago, Dad Got a Phone Call from Her, reads, My mother was murdered when I was 16. About three to four months later, my aunt got a static-filled phone call one night with my mother's voice saying, I'm okay, tell the kids I love them. About that same time, I walked into my grandparents' house one early evening. I lived with them. Nobody was home when I got there that day, and I heard my mom's voice say my name as clear as day. I even knew where the voice was coming from and immediately looked in that direction, in the corner where the phone was located. There was nothing there. It scared me out of my wits. I later told my grandmother about it, and she said, your mommy didn't mean to scare you. She won't bother you anymore. To this day, I can't explain either incident. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys have any interesting stories like this one. They're interesting to read, and a lot of these stories you could find on the subreddit r slash glitch in the matrix. I've actually made a video on this very topic, so go ahead and check it out if you're interested after this video. The Anunnaki. The Anunnaki are a group of deities of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. In the earliest Sumerian writings about them, which came from the post Akkadian period, the Anunnaki are deities in the pantheon, descendants of An and Ki, the god of the heavens and the goddess of earth, and their primary functions was to decree the fates of humanity. In his 1976 book, The Twelfth Planet, author Zakaria Sitchin claimed that the Anunnaki were actually an advanced humanoid extraterrestrial species from the undiscovered planet Nibiru, who came to Earth around 500,000 years ago and constructed a base of operation in order to mine gold after discovering that the planet was rich in the precious metal. According to Sitchin, the Anunnaki hybridized their species and Homo erectus via in vitro fertilization in order to create humans as a slave species of miners. Yeah, we were all Steve's once. Sitchin claimed that the Anunnaki were forced to temporarily leave Earth's surface and orbit the planet when the Antarctic glaciers melted, causing the quote-unquote Great Flood, which also destroyed the Anunnaki's space on Earth. They had to rebuild and the Anunnaki, needing more humans to help them in this massive effort, taught mankind agriculture. This is the reason why we have corn and rice, apparently. According to Sitchin, the Anunnaki built the pyramids and all the other monumental structures from around the ancient world that ancient astronauts theorists consider so impossible to build without highly advanced technologies. David Icke, the British conspiracy theorist who popularized the reptilian conspiracy theory, has also claimed that the reptilian overlords of this theory are in fact the Anunnaki gods. Millenheads, American lore. No, not that Millenhead. In the American folklore of Ohio, Michigan, and Connecticut, Millenheads are beings generally described as small humanoids with bulbous heads who occasionally emerge from hiding places to attack people. Different variations of the legend attribute different origins to the entity. According to one story, they were originally children with hydrocephalus who lived at the Junction Insane Asylum near Felt's Mansion. The story explains that after enduring physical and emotional abuse, they became feral and were released into the forests surrounding the asylum. Black Israelites The Black Israelites are a group of African Americans who believe that they are the descendants of the ancient Israelites, basically the original God's chosen people. Some subgroups believe the Native and Latin Native Americans are descendants of the Israelites as well, and have the chance for salvation. Some Black Israelites also believe that the Jewish community that we know today are simply imposters with a fake and made-up history that steals from their history, claiming that they are indeed the lost tribes of Israel as stated in the Bible. Diet Love Pass Incident The Diet Love Pass Incident was an event in which nine Soviet checkers died in the northern Ural Mountains between 1st and 2nd of February 1959 in uncertain circumstances. Overnight, something caused them to cut their way out of their tents and flee the campsite while inadequately dressed for the heavy snowfall and sub-zero temperatures. After the group's bodies were discovered, an investigation by Soviet authorities determined that six of them had died from hyperthermia, while the other three had been killed by physical trauma. Now, some of these people were found without clothes, and one had detectable traces of radiation on their clothes. Some theories as to why this occurred include a supernatural force, aliens, strange animals, strange natural disaster, and a fight between members. In 2019, Russia decided to reinvestigate and concluded that this incident most likely happened due to an avalanche. Tax protester arguments. Tax protester arguments are arguments made by a group of people 
primarily in the United States, who contend that tax laws are unconstitutional or otherwise invalid. Some tax protesters claim that since the year 1913, the year of the inception of the modern federal income tax, several generations of IRS employees and other officials have stolen from the American public. For example, convicted tax offender Erwin Schiff states on his website in 1986, 99.5 million Americans were tricked into filing and paying federal income taxes when legally they didn't have to do either. If this statement shocks you, it is only because you and the rest of the nation have been thoroughly deceived by the federal government, with federal courts playing the key role, and an army of accountants, lawyers, and other tax preparers. All of these have a vested interest in keeping you ignorant concerning the real nature of federal income taxes. No provision of the Internal Revenue Code requires anyone to file or pay income tax. This tax, unlike other internal revenue taxes, is strictly censored voluntarily. However, in order to deceive Americans of this, as well as provide federal courts and the IRS with the deceptive passages on which to hang illegal prosecutions and illegal seizures, the Internal Revenue Code was written to make paying income taxes appear mandatory. The government succeeded in doing this by tricking the public. Max Spears The death of UFO investigator Max Spears caused controversy amongst theorists due to the strange events surrounding it. Spears claimed to have been kidnapped as a boy and trained in a super soldier program. Escaping, he vowed to expose the British government for what they did. He would go on to focus on informing the public on how to stay vigilant of one's own government and media. Here's the reason he's an entry though. While visiting a friend in Poland sitting on the couch, he began vomiting a black liquidy like substance, dying at the home. Even more strange is that a day before he had texted his mother that he was onto something, and if anything were to happen to him, they should thoroughly investigate it. According to his girlfriend, he had confidential information about world leaders and public figures that he was going to share in the conference that day after he died. On January 7th, 2019, the cause of Spears' death was released as drugs and pneumonia. Though Spears' mother claims that the Polish authorities did not release the paperwork containing the details about her son's death.